So, um, what's what's on your list? Of the best stocks twenty twenty four. Um, I was looking. Um, I know we talked about it before. Troy's mentioned this one a lot. A lot. TSM, I like. Um, I like AMAT. I love AMD. AMD for the next three or four years has no chance to catch up to NVIDIA, but I've loved AMD for a long time. Even some people on the show last week were saying like, oh, do you not love AMD anymore? I love them both. Um, it's like having a Rolls Royce and Bentley. Like, you swap them out, still a good car to drive, you're good. But I think um, AMD, AMAT, and Taiwan Semiconductor, once the geopolitical threat goes away, I'm all in. For those of you who've been buying anyway, I commend you can continue to buy, but I think this notion of like only that the magnificent seven that's producing gains has been a little bit overstated. And I think we're seeing some of these start to make a nice run and will run well into 2024, 2025. Like you have to invest for the long term. Um uh, another ticker SNPS I will put on the watch list as well. I don't love it at the price that it's at now, but cadence design I do like. I have that on the watch list as well. So there's a, a lot of other companies that are doing incredibly well. I know we lean a lot on the big seven and I lean a lot on two tech, two index, but there are some other companies that are setting up to have a nice run in 2024, 25 and 26. And if you guys are investing for the long term, you shouldn't worry about any three month or one month moves at all. Yeah. And, and we still love NVIDIA. We still love NVIDIA. I know people were watching the earnings. They were watching earnings last week and we, we spoke about it uh, and it, it beat, pretty much on every line. But the one thing that was concerning is that future guidance when they're, mm -hmm. you know, when we talked about uh, the geopolitical game between America and China, when it comes to the semiconductor space, what impact will it have? They said it, it would have a, a significant impact in the fourth quarter. Um, but what they did say, in addition to that, which kind of had to stop moving back and forth after the earnings was the fact that they're going to try to make it up in different regions. And so I'd be interested to see which regions like that would be the thing to research. Now, what NVIDIA region probably. is is NVIDIA moving into? And once you see NVIDIA there, I'm sure AMD is already there or going there as well. And so if they lose China, which is not lose China, but obviously the ban, it has hurt some of the sales uh, for the H100. Where is the next space? Is it India? Right. Is it is it South? America? We got to figure out where that's going. Um, yeah. so they can offset some of this loss with the, with this ban. And I mean, who knows, maybe in a, in a, in a year, six months, that ban's lifted and, and you know, this, this goes back to something that could, not that it's going down. I mean, we, we, it's had an incredible year, but 600 yeah. could, could be in the cards for, for NVIDIA if that ban get, gets lifted. Absolutely. And especially like you said, if we pass things over China, cause we were China and America needs each other. We can play fight. It's like the relatives you may not get along with at Thanksgiving, but like y'all still blood relatives, so you got to get along. U.S. and China has to find a way to coexist, or it's going to be disaster for both. But I, if Nvidia breaks ground in India, as India is kind of becoming the new China, we built up that middle class. Whew. Oh baby, so can we do a review video of our own videos? <laughs> They think we should <laughs> and, and go back to what we call. Yeah, might, what, might as well. Might as well. We, we can be the antagonist of our own content, which brings me to what could we have done better in 2023 to have a better show and get people more gains? I know we called NVIDIA, but any ideas that we can take into 2024, which four year anniversary coming up is crazy. This show lasted longer than a lot of my relationships. Hey, baby. <laughs> <laughs> These are just jokes written by DC Youngfly, Chico B. <laughs> Shout out to anyone I've ever dated. You're amazing. I wasn't ready for you. Yada yada. What what company what company do you think um has the best chance Shout of changing the world? <laughs> <laughs> what company do you think has the best chance of changing the world in the next over the next 20 years? Um, I am in love with Starlink. I really think good one. Starlink is going to be like this generation's version of AOL. And I think people forget like how big AOL was. They got the like middle of America connected to the internet. I think this global access at high speeds and you can take fast internet capability with you anywhere, um, it's going to change the game. And this is a great infrastructure project as well. Like I felt like in a social media era, all the capital was going to people that built social media apps and now that their business model is dying a little bit 
or like the, the predominant players are there and they're not going to be moved. I think Elon did a great job in building something that's needed. No one's using landlines, but you kind of need that infrastructure of telecom there. He's built a sexy telecom. So that so if we go to the desert and go to Burning Man, we can still stream and be connected to our loved ones or go to Abu Dhabi or Lake Como, right? Mm. Uh if we get a better driver of the boat, we probably can do the show from the boat. So I think this is one of the one of the brands that is going to do incredibly well. I'm excited about the IPO. We talked about Stripe before. They missed their window. I don't think Elon, given some of the issues that he's had with Twitter, he's going to make up for that loss on Twitter for sure with Starlink. SpaceX, I don't know. I don't know if they're going to let him break through the firmament. But Starlink is going to be a star IPO, star brand, and I think it's going to be a company that actually does change the world. I think um, Neuralink is something that is going to change the world for talk sure. Talk about it. Um, yeah, when you talk about, you know, a pretty much a computer inside your head, um, there's so much endless possibilities. I was just thinking, you know, being out here, and what if there was, you could put a chip in your brain and you could speak every language in the world, right? How, how convenient would that be? Um oh, as opposed to trying to use a translator or trying to learn a language it takes years to learn languages. Like, cause you know, most people outside of America know at least two languages. Most Americans only, only know English, but imagine if you could just put the chip in your brain and go to Japan and just speak fluent Japanese and understand it as well. There's endless possibilities, it's extremely dangerous, obviously, and scary. But um, once again, Elon Musk, guys got his hands and everything. If you really think about it, it's kind of scary that, when you look at you know the two companies that we just named, we didn't even talk. Yeah. We didn't even talk about SpaceX. Oh, um, that's that's, that's another one. You know, so yeah. it's like you know he could potentially have um, four of the most powerful companies in the world. Mm -hmm. I are you done? I wasn't sure. No, yeah. I'm just saying if he has four, I don't think that's ever been done before in, in human history. Mm -hmm. no. One person, one person controlled. You know four companies multi-billion dollar valuations and so powerful um from transportation to human brain networking to internet yeah um <laughs> yeah. when you put it like that, and yeah. that's an index like for one person to own those could be the big four by 2050 or, or 2040 yeah did, did you see where you travel today where is he? So we travel today? No, where, where is he? He is in Israel. He said that he wants to help uh, rebuild uh, Gaza. I digress. But I, I, I know you want to comment on that. So why is he in Israel if he wants to rebuild Gaza? Well, he's meeting with Prime Minister. He should, he should, he should, just, he should, he should stay out of this. <laughs> he should stay out of that situation. That's, that's where he's at today. He's just, he's, he's, yeah, he, his best bet is just to shut up when it comes to geopolitical politics because he's, he's, He's trying to do damage control, and it's, it's yeah. He should just stay focused on, on what he needs to stay focused on. You think it's a PR move? I, I think it's one hundred percent a PR move. As far as him going to Israel, obviously, you know every everything that happened on Twitter last week, and everybody was calling him anti-Semitic. So, I think he's trying to save face. But um, I just think he just does a, a lot of unnecessarily. He does things that are unnecessary and um, causes a lot of issues for himself unnecessarily i get that he's a celebrity and he's playing to that and he's please he's the biggest you know business personality in the world i understand like you know it's valuable to his brand but i think it's a thin line between being a celebrity and just you know putting yourself in a situation where you have to you know now you got to try to fix what you said and you try to get back sponsors and show yeah. face and do it it's just like Going back to your Elon you, and Kanye point. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. I I will take um those are great companies that you both named. Um I was thinking along those same lines, but I think uh I, initially I was thinking Microsoft, but I'm going to go with Google. Um just because the level of interest, infrastructure, the ability to, to create product, the innovation and we talked about it last week where even we were speaking about ChatGPT 
as an idea. Well, where was it birthed, right? Before OpenAI was a company, the idea was at Google. The, yeah. Uh, DeepMind was at Google, still is. And so we're talking about infrastructure product, but the most important thing that they have that only Zuckerberg can really challenge is data. Nobody has more than them, right? They can challenge Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg, obviously, with Facebook. And so they have the key components, the, the digital gold of our generation. They have the key to it. They have the ability to put out product in this AI yeah. space, right? Because even when we talk about the competitors, who's in the AI space, we talk about Microsoft with OpenAI. But Google's been there from the the beginning um and so they have the the board they have great leadership i think we haven't seen the best of what's to come from google and that's saying a lot with it being one of the best seven companies by market cap in, in uh the country i think we haven't seen that go-to product from them yet right like the pixel is a, a cool phone but they don't have the product and so yeah, no, maybe not putting the chip in your brain but what if there was a device that and we saw that right that you put a device on you that translates for you right there um that's less invasive right because some people will want to have the chip in their brain but there'll be a bunch of people that say that's too invasive but having a product right like the apple has the iphone what is google's product um i think they they have the ability to do that with their le level of talent that's inside that company um so i i would say google it's a nice lineup Neuralink, starlink google or alphabet hard to lose. or alphabet yeah hard, hard to yeah. lose Hard to lose. Um, so um, from a, before we leave, no, go ahead. Before we leave, I wanted to talk about Binance. Uh, um, so uh, yeah, um, Binance CEO got himself in some hot water, uh, money laundering allegations, and um, you know, feds came in, and now he's trying to leave the country. So <laughs> what, what's the deal with this, and what what do we make on this whole situation? Um, hit dogs always holler. Uh. I've learned like when people espouse, like let, let's say hypothetically, like we do a free show every week. Y'all do a free show every Tuesday. And then they're like, well, y'all charge too much. They're the ones who are actually charging too much. So when he started railing against Sam Bankman Freed, I remember my mom calling me and my mom was like, what if he's doing the same thing and trying to put all the heat on him? I told you guys two years ago, they're going to come in, cl clean up the crypto space. Banks are going to take over. Some of these people may be plants, but I think, of course, I mean, of course, if you know that you're going to go to jail and you got to pay a $4 billion fine, I'm pretty sure he wants to go to Thailand so he can't face the sentence the same as facing. I think we're just seeing the maturation of crypto space. The dot-com internet space went through something similar late 90s, early 2000s, where they had to clean up some of the players there. Um, it's unfortunate because I think this has done some damage to the credibility of some of the companies but if they find a great ceo with great leadership that can deliver on his promises i think binance will be okay coinbase will be okay a lot of these projects will be okay um and this happens in every industry you have nefarious characters in every sector that end up not being reliable you get them out of the way and if you find great leadership they're going to go to the moon no pun intended so um i think it's sad but eventually a lot of times I've learned when people are projecting, they're also revealing their own hand. Because most people that are, like the people who are always calling out someone for a particular action are the ones who are usually doing the behavior. So it was very telling how hard he was railing against Sam um, about a year ago, and now he has to face the same fate. So keep your eyes on your own paper focus on building your own business and going back to the not competing thing Rashad that you were talking about and Troy that you were talking about earlier I think we have to have once again CEOs who are focused on just making the companies great that's the thing that I love about Satya until they had this issue with open AI I didn't know Satya's thoughts on anything outside of Microsoft he was just heads down focused so especially in a more volatile space like crypto um high frequency trading where the volatility is higher you need a ceo that is head down and not focus on the gossip so that's that this, this day red panda anthem and what's up this day. red panda anthem red panda what's good red panda anthem <laughs> your boy going up i know they can't stand it